Hey YouTube, what's up? It's CS back here with another installment, and here are my picks for UFC on Fuel TV, Gustafson vs. Silva. Alrighty folks, well the Zufa MMA card drought is going to be over very soon, come this card, I can't wait for it. Here we go, UFC in Sweden, you know, they're doing it up big there, I think most of the bouts on the card are pretty exciting, including the preliminary card bouts. Again, like usual, check out my preliminary card picks in the description below. But yeah, this main card is pretty sick. Uh, for the most part, most of those main card matches are, you know, main card quality. So that puts a smile on my face. And yeah, here we go. I can't wait. Alexander Gustafson versus Thiago Silva. But I do got a surprise for you all. You know, I'm bringing my MMA contest series back. So, you know, if you pick the right fighter to win in the main event between Alexander Gustafsson and Thiago Silva and you pick the right method this could be yours if there's multiple people who pick you know the same method that actually won then yeah you will be picked at random to win this shirt you know Alexander Gustafsson T bad boy the mall right there yeah I don't know that Viking looks pretty sick so guys if you want this t-shirt Definitely just tell me who you think is going to win and by how in the comments section below. Also, I have to give another shout out again to my boy uh, Demarcus Brown over at Pair of 16's Urban MMA Apparel. Doing it up big for me as well. Again, you know, thank you for sponsoring the video, my dude. I'll put a link in the description below to his online store so you guys can go cop his stuff. But yeah, let's get on with this starting at the top with the main event between Alexander Gustafsson and Thiago Silva. Alright folks, now in my opinion, this is the easiest bout on the card to call. I got Alexander the Mahler Gustafsson winning all day, every day in this one over Thiago Silva. It's just Thiago Silva, I think it's a nightmare matchup for him. You know, really, Alexander Gustafsson is the more athletic fighter, he's a better striker, uh, and he's going to be able to keep this thing on the feet. So, how is Thiago Silva going to be offensive in this one? I think this is going to be the story of Thiago Silva trying to get to the ground like he did against Brendan Vera and ultimately not resulting in him getting outstruck over the course of three or five rounds or getting knocked out. You know what I'm saying? I think that um, Thiago Silva's jiu-jitsu takedowns just don't have the stuff to take down an Alexander Gustafsson, someone whose takedown defense was already good, but it continues to improve. So I don't think we're going to see Gustafsson on his back at all whatsoever. And we're going to see a discouraged um, Thiago Silva um, after that, you know, not being able to get to the ground because Gustafsson's a beast on feet. And, you know, Thiago Silva didn't even want to strike with Brandon Vera. So why would you want to strike with uh, Alexander Gustafsson, you know? Uh, Gustafsson, technically on the feet, is pretty good. Doesn't throw a lot of combinations, but with the power he packs, he really doesn't need to. He kind of just drops you with that one punch and then finishes you off with more, uh, resulting in a KO or TKO victory. Um, his kicks are pretty good as well. But uh, with his range and uh, being able to hit people at the end of his punches, but still hurt them, yeah, it's kind of nasty. I don't know. I think he is the best striker technically in that division. And I think he's going to show it this fight because, you know, Thiago Silva is going to be throwing haymakers after he realizes he can't get this Gustafson guy down to the ground. And you're just going to see Gustafson just read that shit and, you know, put him out to be a, a TKO. So I don't see how he doesn't do that. I think he does it within two rounds. I'm going to say a second round TKO for Alexander Gustafsson, Thiago Silva. I just don't see him doing that Donkey Kong shit like he did to Brandon Vera against Gustafsson. I think Gustafsson's going to come out with a vengeance because, you know, Brandon Vera's his boy, right? So I've got Gustafsson winning via nasty second round TKO punches over Thiago Silva. Alrighty, folks, now let's move on to, I guess, the co-main event between Alessio Sakara and Brian Stan in a middleweight bout. Guys, i got Stan winning this one all day, every day. It's just... I don't think Alessio Sakara is going to be on his takedown game. I think that's what he should do in order to beat Stan because uh, he does like to strike and he's kind of good at it. You know, his boxing skills are solid. I just think Brian Stan's boxing skills are better. I think also Brian Stan will be a little bit quicker on the trigger. Um, I think him and uh, Coach Winklejohn have a good chemistry over at Jackson's MMA. And I think uh, they're going to have a good solid game plan in terms of uh, positioning and where to pull strikes um, come for this bout against, you know, Alessio Sakara. I think uh, Sakara, again, he should be on his takedown game because Brian Stan really isn't that much of a threat off his back unless like the dude's tired or uh, stupid like Steve Cantwell. So I don't think Alessio Sakara is that dumb, you know, in terms of the top position game. I think that's what he should focus on doing, trying to get Brian Stan on his back. And I think if uh, Alessio Sakara is able to do that over the course of three, then he should win. I just don't think he'll even try to. So I got Brian Stan eventually winning via third round TKO punches. I think it's going to take him a while to find... Um, 
Alessio Sakara's, you know, sweet spot in terms of getting knocked out. You know, it took him a while to knock out George Santiago. And, uh, you know, Alessio Sakara's not as hittable as, like, Chris Lieben. So, I got Brian Stan winning uh, later in this fight this time. Again, third round TKO over Alessio Sakara via punches. Alrighty, folks, now let's move on to that Paulo Tiago. CR Bahadur Zada welterweight match. This is another easy one to call. I got Paulo Tiago winning this all day, every day over CR. It's just, what does CR do when he walks into the ring? Expect a strike for three rounds? If not, put him out early? I just don't see any of that shit happening. I think Paulo Tiago is going to come in there, close the distance with his boxing, and not get counterpunched in the process. And when he closes the distance, cl uh, clinch up really fast, and eventually uh, go for one of those judo throws. It should be fairly easy against a guy like CR. One of the more one-dimensional fighters in that division. He's a sick striker, but that's really all he has to offer people. Once he's, um, you know, on his back, you know, it's seconds before he gets tapped out. Paulo Tiago is nasty on the ground. He has solid chokes um, from wherever. Um, as long as he's on the top somehow, you know, nice anacondas, darces, arm triangle. I'm gonna say he uh, tries to TKO. Uh, CR Bahadur Zada, uh, but in the process transitions for an arm triangle. Let's say it happens late round one. I don't see uh, CR having a shot in this fight because I don't think Paul Tiago gives him a much of a puncher's chance. So I got Paul Tiago again, first round submission, arm triangle. After CR Bahadur Zada loses his fight, and after Shane Mills loses his fight against Rory McDonald at UFC 145, I want to see those two go at it. Alrighty, folks, now let's move on to that featherweight bout between Diego Nunez and Dennis Seaver. Of course, Devin, Dennis Seaver is making his featherweight debut, and I don't think it's going to be a good one because I think Diego Nunez is going to be at the top of his game come this fight. You know, he made a camp change to Black House. He's still affiliated with Nova Uniao, but he, he was training at Black House for this fight, and uh, I think he's going to have a newfound aggression uh, come this bout. You know, D uh, Dennis Seaver, you know, I think this fight's going to be like him versus Ross Pierce. You know, Diego Nunez is going to be slightly more aggressive. He's going to be more athletic. He's going to hit harder. He's more ranger. I think Dennis Seaver has everything against him in this fight. I think the only thing he's better at is spinning back kicks. And I just don't think he's going to be able to dictate the pace of the fight uh, with that, you know, against someone who's always moving around, someone always trying to pick his shots like a Diego Nunez. I think Diego Nunez is just going to do that. I think Dennis Seaver is going to try to control the center of the octagon, but I think Diego Nunez is just going to rotate around him and uh, just uh, put punches in his face, throw leg kicks, and I just think uh, Dennis Seaver is going to be flustered over the course of three rounds here. i got Diego Nunez cruising to a unanimous decision here. Again, he's just a better athlete, and I think uh, his striker IQ is better than Dennis Seaver's. Dennis Seaver really has only outstruck guys who are on paper worse, striker, worse strikers than him, guys like... You know, I'm Matt Wyman, and Diego Nunez is not that. He's more athletic, and again, the better striker, in my opinion. So I got Diego Nunez winning via unanimous decision. Alrighty, folks, now let's move on to that John McGuire, the Marcus Johnson welterweight bout. And I got John McGuire winning this all day, every day. Another easy bout to call John McGuire via unanimous decision. It's just his ability to get to the ground and his aggression to do so is going to be better than, you know, Demarcus's ability to keep it standing up. Guys, Demarcus Johnson versus a wrestler equals lose for Demarcus Johnson. You know, John McGuire, you know, pretty good top control. Ground and pound, not the greatest, but he's going to be active enough that the ref doesn't stand up this fight. You might see him go for a solid Kimura. Those Kimuras kind of nasty. Wouldn't be surprised to see that go off on Demarcus. But I think Demarcus is actually going to defend on the ground. It's just he doesn't do a good job of trying to get up. And I just think that, um, you know, he won't be attacking enough on the ground to even make it look close on the ground. Uh, again, I said John McGuire's ground pound's not the greatest. Uh, and that's not going to be good because DeMarcus isn't going to attack enough off the back. So it might look like an ugly fight. Still, John McGuire, you know, whatever, unanimous decision. He should take this if he fights to his strength because DeMarcus just can't defend against it. Marcus, if he goes out there and blitzes John McGuire, I think that's his best way of winning because I don't think he's going to be able to, uh, with his skinny ass frame, you know, defend against John McGuire takedowns. I got John McGuire again, unanimous decision. Alrighty, folks, now let's move on to that Brad Pickett, Demacio Page, featherweight bout kicking off the main card. This is the last one I'm breaking down, so enjoy it, guys. But yeah, Brad Pickett all day, every day in this one. How does he lose against Demacio Page? You know, I don't see De Demacio Page, you know, being able to outbox him. I don't see him out wrestling Brad Pickett. That's pretty much all he has for Brad Pickett. You know, I think Brad Pickett is a better boxer and a better wrestler. I think he's better at, 
you know, doing both comfortably. You know, I think Brad Pickett's transitions are pretty good. He doesn't mind boxing with you one moment and then trying to take you down the next. And I think that's what we're going to see a lot of in this fight. I think it's going to be fairly exciting. I think Demacio Page is going to be competitive while it's on the feet. But I just think that Brad Pickett's, um, you know, initiative in terms of mixing it up is going to be the difference maker for him. Again, I think he's slightly uh, technically better boxer as well. So I just think that it's going to look you know, relatively lopsided for him. I think he wins 10-9 in every round. So I got Brad Pickett winning via 30-27 unanimous decision, just being better everywhere and, of course, being the better fighter altogether. Well, all right, folks, I think that about does it for my picks for UFC on Fuel TV, Gustafson versus Silva. Again, if you want to cop that shirt, please try to do so. Tell me in the comment section below who's winning the fight in the main event between Alexander Gustafson and Thiago Silva, and also tell me a method and a round and this could be in your mailbox in the near future. Who knows? Also, again, shout out to Pair of 16's Urban MMA Apparel. You rock the Marcus. Appreciate the hookups. Again, guys, check out his online store in the description below. I think that about does it in general. Enjoy the event, guys. Deuces for all my supporters. Bruce for all my haters. Shout out to Sweden and take care.